Something that occasionally comes up is the need for a name, a monogram, a logo, or brand, or some other graphic to be embossed on a piece. Something that couldn't be hand carved or done with off the shelf stamps. In the past, this would require special ordering an expensive stamp that would most likely be used once and never used again. But now with 3D printing, I can make any stamp I want quickly and cheaply in my own workshop, which in this case is my garage. I'm going to show a brief bullet point view of the process I use to do this. It might not be the most efficient way, but it's the one that has worked for me. This isn't intended to be a comprehensive technical step-by-step how-to video. It would be two hours long if it were. Instead, the intent of this video is to be more inspirational. Most people are aware of 3D printing, but may not know it can be a very handy tool in their leather work. And that with a relatively small investment in equipment and a little time learning the basics of a few apps, you can do it too. My friend runs a tabletop wargaming channel on YouTube. He asked me about a collapsible leather dice tray. I wanted to make it, but also wanted to add something to personalize it. Unfortunately, he didn't have access to the native vector files for his logo, so I'll have to recreate that from scratch. I'm using Adobe Illustrator here, which is a paid subscription, but there are some free options out there, which I'll touch on here in a second. I lucked out and found the actual font that was used in his logo, so that makes it a lot easier. The goal at this point is to design a graphic and export it out as an SVG file. The typeface was easy, but these two slashes here I'm going to have to recreate with my pen tool. It's a little tricky, but not too difficult to master once you've played with it a little bit. And of course, for a basic logo type, you can use any font. As long as you can turn it into an SVG, any graphic you can create should work. Okay, so I think I've recreated the logo fairly well. All I need to do is turn it into an SVG. Most people probably won't have the budget for an Adobe Illustrator subscription just for this. The good news is that there are several vector graphic programs available for free. One of the most popular is Inkscape. I'm in no way an expert at this app, having downloaded it and used it for the first time just for this video. However, it seems to have the same basic functionality as Illustrator. I was able to recreate the logo in this app as well. Now that we have a 2D SVG graphic, we need to turn it into 3D, a physical object that we can print. My favorite tool for this is Tinkercad. This is a very basic 3D modeling software designed for people who have absolutely zero experience in working with 3D modeling software. In a nutshell, the way Tinkercad works is that you're given a set of basic primitive shapes uh, that you can then put together Lego style to create larger, more complex 3D shapes. And you can actually create some pretty complicated uh, 3D models using this. More importantly for our purposes here, Tinkercad allows you to import SVGs as long as they are under 25 megabytes. So I'm going to grab the logo file that I just created and drop it in. Tinkercad will calculate for a second and there you have it. And as you can see, our 2D object has already been extruded a little bit, which simply means that it now has depth. What we need to do here is turn these separate objects into one solid object. The best way to do this is to take one of our primitive shapes, in this case a cube, smash it down, and create a background frame for it. And I've learned through experience that it's best to try to get your frame as close to, as possible to the edges. This will simply help in positioning it later on when you're actually stamping it into the leather. Now that we have our solid piece, the last step is to flip it or mirror it. Remember it's a stamp, so we need to do this so that it reads right way once we actually stamp it. 
at this point, note that I haven't really worried about the size of it yet. I'll worry about the size once we get to our slicer program. And finally, we are at the point where we can export as an STL. The STL file is what the ultimate goal is. This is what the printer uses to actually print. I should probably point out that if you wanted to skip uh, Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape or any of the other vector graphic programs, that Tinkercad actually does have a very basic type tool of its own. Um, although you're limited to one serif font and one sans serif font, and there's not a lot you can do with them. Um, but with a combination of this and some of your basic shapes, you can put together a, uh, a stamp in Tinkercad just by itself. Okay, almost there. Just one more piece of software that we need to get familiar with, is, and that is our slicer. Um, the slicer is essentially the, the app that talks to the 3D printer. It's the, the program that takes your physical object and slices it up into hundreds of layers that the printer then prints. Um, and which slicer you use is going to depend on what, uh, what printer you have. In my case, I'm using an MSLA printer, so I am using Chittabox. And not particularly because that's the best or that I endorse it, it's just the one that was recommended from uh, the manufacturer of my particular machine. So, um, there you go. Okay, we're ready to print. Um, this is a MSLA printer, uh, kind of otherwise known as a, just a resin printer. And this is the type of printer that I would highly recommend for this because this is the only type of printer, in my opinion, that can print the fine details that most people are going to need for this project. If memory serves me correctly, I purchased this particular machine off Amazon for a little over $200, which might sound like a lot, but when you consider the price of custom stamps, uh, then it, the price doesn't really look that bad. One thing to consider is that the resins used in this are technically hazardous materials, although they're not something to be afraid of. But appropriate caution should be used. Just gloves, eye protection, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. In this case, I work in my garage, um, so that's not a problem. For those not familiar with the technology, this type of printer exposes layers of a photopolymer resin to UV light, which hardens, forming a solid object. This is repeated hundreds or often thousands of times as a build plate gradually rises to form a solid 3D object. It's actually pretty cool. But in this case, our stamp is fairly flat, so it only takes about 15 minutes. And it looks like a good print, but I won't be able to tell until I get it washed off. This washing and curing station is not a necessity, but I will say that it makes it much more convenient. And um, they're often purchased together. Resin prints have to go through a curing process, exposing it to UV light. Again, you don't need this curing station. You can actually just take the print outside and let it sit in the daylight for about 15 minutes. The rest of this video is a standard leatherworking video, so I'm just going to let the soundtrack play.
For larger stamps like this, you'll want to have something to help distribute the weight from the arbor press. I'm using a 1-2-3 block here, but uh, it obviously can be anything you want, um, as long as it won't shatter. So a legitimate question is, how long will these stamps last, these stamps made out of 3D resin? And my response is, I actually don't know. Uh, I've always made these for one-off projects like this, so I've never worn one out. Uh, although I will say that I used this particular stamp several times in the making of this video with a one-ton arbor press, and it seems to be holding up just fine. But realistically, if one wears out or breaks, you can just print a new one. So I would say indefinitely. Since this is a dice tray, I want the bottom surface to remain perfectly flat. So another use for the 3D printer is printing a backer board.